It's a great honor to be uh, invited to come here and speak to all of you uh, people. And it's a lot of fun to come to the Netherlands and see your beautiful country. So I saw some hands for C++ programmers. Um, how many of you are programmers or want to be programmers or studying to be programmers? <laughs> for pretty much everyone. OK, so, so I wandered into the right uh, conference room. Um, so I've been programming for decades, and I thought I'd, uh, and I was asked to give a little insight about, you know, what, what is life like for me as a programmer who's been doing it for a long time, and I still enjoy doing it. I try to do it every day. First, I, I graduated from Caltech, which is a pretty good engineering school, and my degree is in mechanical engineering, not programming. My first job was working on the Boeing 757 uh, design team, and I designed uh, uh, gearboxes for the 757. Uh, more specifically, it was a stabilizer trim gearbox, which is a piece of uh, critical machinery. And uh, then I got a job at Data.io and designed my first programming language, which was the ABLE language, and ABLE is a programming language which enables you to design uh, programmable logic devices. Then I worked at Symantec uh, working on C++ and Java compilers. So this is my career working for corporations. Organizations, well, I first off, uh, has anybody heard of Empire? You know, this is amazing, that game is ancient. And yet, still, people send me email about it. And you young people, you know, some of you have actually heard of it, which is amazing. Um, then I got the idea I was going to develop a C compiler, and that was the Northwest Software C compiler, which morphed over time into Datalite C, which morphed into Zortex C++, which was the first native uh, C++ compiler. So I'm kind of guilty of in helping inflict C++ on everyone. And that morphed into Digital Mars C++. And then I decided that it was time to invent my own programming language and stop complaining about other languages. And that was the D programming language. Okay, so everybody's different. What works for um, one programmer doesn't work for others. So you have to find what works for you. This is what works for me. OK, I'm one of those lucky people I get to work at home. I have a separate room, which is my office. Um, I always have the stereo playing. <laughs> I found a dining room table makes for a great desk, because you don't have the darn drawers in the way. And, and if you have a bunch of monitors or a bunch of equipment, you can position your chair anywhere you like. And my equipment is actually pretty modest because I like to develop on the machines that the people who are using my software are likely to be running. So I don't buy a super fast machine or anything like that. Because if I have a super fast machine, I know what's going to happen. Anybody, anybody got an idea what's going to happen if I have a super fast machine? OK, what happens is my software runs like a pig on a normal machine. <laughs> It inevitably happens because you, you don't notice it when the crud starts to creep into it. So I try to have the same machine they use. And as I get older, I find I get more and more sensitive to the fan noise. So I don't know why that is. So my machine is really focused and set up to be quiet. And my concession to having something fancy is I love having a huge display. My ideal display would be the whole wall, <laughs> you know, with you know, like 10,000 pixels on it or something like that. Um, I tend to work at night, which is kind of incompatible working in a corporate office. I've always been a night owl. I never have been able to do effective work in the morning. 
Um, I, I drink about a pot of coffee a day. <laughs> it's my, my one vice. And I live in Seattle, and it's fortunate that I love rainy nights because it's quiet and the sound of the rain just always puts me in the mood to uh, write good code. So I think that's a similar weather around here, isn't it? <laughs> so you, you guys have a great opportunity to produce a great software because, <laughs> you know, there's no surfing beach nearby to distract you. But, you know, I consider myself a good programmer, but, you know, I look back at code I wrote recently, and oftentimes it, it looks like garbage. Has anybody had that experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I decided that, you know, there, there's something terribly wrong, and I was going to get to the root cause of the problem. And, and you notice the trail cam pictures? You know, the wildlife always runs away when you come into the forest, so what these people do is they set up a camera with a motion detector and try to catch the wildlife unawares. So I set up one in my office to find out what was going wrong, and I found the, I found the problem. <laughs> so this is who I blame all my problems on, <laughs> my office buddy. One of the problems with uh, working for a corporation is they expect you to actually be there. <laughs> and I find one of my uh, best ways to program and most productive time spent programming is, you know, going out for a run. I find that, uh, you know, they don't really understand why you disappear from the office <laughs> in the corporation, but I do my best thinking when I'm running I don't know why that is, but it works. So before I go running, I'll load up the context. I'll read about the problem, I'll study the code, and get everything loaded up in my head, and I go running, and I get into the zone while you're running. Does any runners here? Yeah, you know about the zone, right? Yeah, you get into the zone, and suddenly, while you're working on a problem, you realize you have no recollection of the last mile you ran, because you're completely immersed in a problem, and I often have the problem solved when I get back, and then I just have to turn on my computer and, and type, in the, type in the result. And I do my programming that way. I've solved the most difficult problems that way. I write my articles that way. I wrote this presentation. <laughs> While I was out running, just come back to my office and just type it in. One of the big problems when you work alone, like I do, is staying motivated. And what happens is, is I've become used to what happens with me, is my motivation waxes and wanes, sort of like the lunar cycle. I haven't actually tracked it to see if it actually lines up with the lunar cycle. That would be kind of weird. <laughs> and sometimes I grow extra hair at certain times. <laughs> But I notice that, you know, when it's waxing, you know, getting, uh, getting more and more motivated, I take advantage of it. You know, it's like when the wave comes, you get on your surfboard and you ride the wave. And when it wanes, you know, don't worry about it, because it always comes back. That doesn't work too well in the corporate environment either, because they don't like it when it's on the wane and you're just kind of sitting there at the computer playing with Reddit. <laughs> but even when it wanes, what you want to be doing is you want to be working on the code every day. And it doesn't matter how little you work on it. It can be as much as a minute. Just bring up a source file and improve a comment, or fix a misspelling, or maybe just improve something little. It doesn't matter how small it is. The idea is to do something every day. Because it's amazing how those minutes add up. You know, you might think you're only spending a minute a day, but when a month goes by, you realize, hey, you know, looking back, I made a lot of progress. It really does work. And you'll find the same advice, like if you're writing a novel or something like that. You write something every day. And it's when the motivation does return, your context is still fresh in your mind, 
and you're ready to hit that wave and ride it. You're always up to speed. So what I do at uh, work is, like I said, I'm not a morning person. So in the morning, what I do is I read the email. And there's always a crisis on email. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> if you work, there's a crisis every morning. Um, I look at the tech forums see what's happening, answer questions, help people. Um, there's always something interesting going on in the D forms. Somebody's always proposing a new idea. Somebody asked me earlier about creativity. Is, is it on the wane? Absolutely not. At least I haven't seen any evidence. There's always somebody with a new idea. Um, a lot of people contribute to the D source code, so I got to go on GitHub and review it. And if I got any time left, I work on bug fixes and new capabilities, like uh, right now I'm working on adding support for C++ exception handling in D. So, so much for that. <laughs>